I got the refractory cement a couple days ago. Um, I'm about to put on a dust mask and then coat the inside of this foundry. And it should pretty much be done. I did a few tests with it with just the kale. Um, and it, it gets up to heat so fast. Um, I'm not going to do a coating of the refractory cement on the lid though. I think I'm just going to put it, you know, on the walls and at the very bottom. So here it is with the full coating on it. It was kind of difficult to get the, the cement to kind of stick to the, the kale wool. But um, once you kind of got it started and warmed up, I guess, that um, made it able to stick. So I got a pretty good coating on it, just about an eighth of an inch all around. I still have about like five eighths of the of the bucket left, so if I have to do any repairs, I'll have plenty of cement to do that. So yeah, I'm, it doesn't say how long you have to wait for this to cure on the bottle. So I'm just going to probably let it cure overnight, and then tomorrow I'm going to come back to it, see if it's dry, and if it is, I'm going to slowly um, bring it up to heat, and yeah. So it's the next day, and the refractory seems to be pretty hard, I guess. It's not, it doesn't feel completely dry, but on the on the bottle it says it has no needed set time. So I'm assuming that means as long as it's solid and not, like, dripping off, then it can be used. So I'm going to heat it up and see how it goes. So I don't know if you can see that, but the refractory started to bubble up right when I turned on the burner. Um, so I'm going to let it wait out in the sun until it looks completely dry. So, yeah. All right, so here's the foundry all finished up and ready for use. Um, the refractory cement, I'd say it works pretty well. It's just the only thing is I put on too thick of a coating at first. So, um, it, a lot of it, like the, the top layer of it, chipped away a little bit. That's why you can kind of see, like right there, there's like um, kind of two layers. The first layer chipped away because it kind of bubbled up a little bit. Um, so, uh, I think that's because I put on too thick of a layer. And you can see some bubbles starting to form like that a little bit right there. Um, but those, like I said, it's just because I put on too thick of a layer at first. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of chip those bubbles off. Um, and then once I do that, it's pretty much ready for use. Guys, I'm getting pretty excited. I've had this going for about not even five minutes yet. Yeah, it's pretty dang hot. Oh, the, the refractory, the, the kale wool, um, it's noticeably more efficient than the, uh, the plaster pears and sand mixture. Like, I obviously knew it would be a lot better because, you know, it's actually made for this. But it's surprising once you actually use it. Look at this. You know, it's kind of hot actually, but I burned my hand a little bit. But still, that is surprisingly good. It's only one inch of KO wool and a little bit, like not even an eighth inch of refractory cement. And you can hold your, like that. You can go like that and it doesn't burn you immediately. It's already my first copper casting, I'm learning so much. So, um, I think, so basically what happened is the, the casting went great. I casted all the ingots that I wanted to, um, got all the stuff, all the copper out of the crucible. Everything went well, except 
the um, copper fused, not welded, but it fused to the muffin tin. I'm not sure if it was a coating, but the muffin tin was, I think, like 16 gauge, maybe 22 gauge uh, stainless steel, I think. Probably regular mild steel. But, um, so the copper fused to that. I think that's one due to, like I just said, the steel being really thin, but also because I think I was running the foundry too hot. I, um, I think what I need to do for copper is not run it incredibly hot, but just run it at a temperature that I know will melt copper. It's just um, a little bit longer and be patient with it. That's what I think I need to do next time. So the copper it's got fused to the muffin tin, the bottom of the muffin tin, so I kind of had to hit it out with a, with a hammer. Okay. You can see that. Uh, so I'm just kind of working on figuring out how to get the copper out and then yeah I'm incredibly happy that this foundry can get up to copper melting temperatures so easily so because now I'll be able to literally cast whatever I want out of copper and I'm super happy about that so I'm looking forward to doing more projects with copper in the future so yeah